Welcome to a sunny Cambridge. There's always a long list of jobs to do in the garden at this time of the year, but it's time for another orchid video. First off, I want to do a recap on previous video that I did on pleony orchids, because this is my pleony formosana, which as you can see is nearly finished now. There's a snail there. Um, and I haven't got round to doing all the dead heading. But these are the last flowers just finishing. Now, what I wanted to say was, when I shot the video, it was the 19th of April and the plants were looking fabulous. This is the 3rd of June and there are still flowers just only just finished. And as recently as two weeks ago, and I shot a little bit of footage that I was going to do, um, for a little sort of video, but I didn't actually get round to editing it. So I'll just insert that over the top of what I'm saying. But my point is that these, this particular species lasts at least five or six weeks, which is much longer than I thought was the case until I started doing the filming. So really fabulous. So you can see now it needs sort of dead heading. Um, the leaves have grown a lot since I filmed them. And A lot of the early flowering ones, as I said in one of my previous videos, you can now just go over and tidy them up and very gently remove all the old flowering stems. Now one point worth mentioning is that it's currently about 16 degrees centigrade, so it's still quite cool. And that has been the weather recently in Cambridge. And that has in a way held them back and I think made them the, the flowers last longer than they might have done otherwise. But even so, I just wanted to say that Pleone Formosana, fantastic. Flowers last miles longer than any of the other varieties that I've got here. Really good value and I didn't realise how good they were. Anyway, let's go inside where it's a bit warmer. Right, um, in the warm now. What temperature is 22.5 centigrade in here which still isn't very warm and because the weather outside has been quite chilly um, the temperature in here has hardly got above this um, for all the, all the year so far. The first orchid that I thought I'd show you now and probably the most flamboyant that I've got in flower at the moment is this. And it normally lives hanging much higher up near the glass behind the camera. But this is Cattleya canhamiana, which is a hybrid between two species, Cattleya mossiae and Cattleya purpurata, which used to be called Lelia purpurata, and I still call it Lelia purpurata. It's thanks to a previous video where I included a little bit on this orchid and I said at that time that I didn't know what it was because a very kind lady at our local orchid show had given me uh, some divisions of this um, quite a few years ago and she didn't have a name for it and I just couldn't find on the internet which one it was. But one of my viewers very kindly wrote and told me that it was Cattleya canhamiana which was really useful because then I could go ahead and look it up and research its parentage and find out a lot more about it. The two species that form this hybrid are both scented, both very beautiful South American Cattleya type orchids. And I particularly like this because it possesses the charm and delicacy of species orchids. And it has also combined the fabulous scent of both parents and this has a wonderful perfume. I really treasure this orchid. Now, generally speaking, this greenhouse isn't very well suited to Cattleyas because it's not quite warm enough. And more particularly, it just isn't bright enough. They really need a lot of light. And that's why it lives hanging quite high up near the glass. So I just about get away with it here. This greenhouse doesn't get much sun at all for a lot of the year and it's very relatively cool and moist and humid which suits a lot of my other orchids 
um, a lot of Cilogenes perfectly. They grow absolutely easily. But Catlias not so much. And it wasn't until um, I was given this that I even thought of growing Catlias at all. And so I was delighted when it did start growing and flowering reliably. And every year it flowers at this time of the year and produces this wonderful display of flamboyant flowers with a wonderful scent. Really lovely. I can highly recommend it. The name Catlia canhamium actually covers quite a few different variations because the two parent species vary a lot in their colouring. And so when the two species have been brought together to produce a hybrid, the offspring also vary a bit. Um, so there's quite a range, but this is a lovely orchid to have. So I've got it hanging up here at the moment, which is just by our kitchen door, so I can come past and smell it. The other orchid that I'm particularly pleased about at the moment is this, Vanda Denisoniana orange. I've had this for a long time because I bought it as a small plant for my orchid show here in London. And after a few years, it started to produce flower spikes, which I thought was a good sign. But they always did it in the middle of the winter when it was really dark and cold and they always aborted. Last year, for the first time, it produced a flower spike in the summer and then flowered in the autumn. Um, so for, and of course that enabled the flower spike to develop. So I was then able to see it for the first time. This year, it's done the sensible thing and produced a flower spike in the spring and it's produced flowers now, which is actually the first time of year that I saw it in flower at an orchid show here in England, years and years ago. So I'm very pleased about this and I'm hoping that from now on it will flower regularly at this time of the year and possibly again later in the year if it's a good summer. Like the Cattleya, this demands more light than most of my other orchids get in here. So it's another of the orchids that I have hanging up quite near the glass to give it as much light as possible. In the, not at the moment, but it has a really interesting scent uh, later in the day. Another of my totally reliable orchids that produces a fantastic display every year and in this case gets a little bit better each year, is this Neophenicia cherry blossom, uh, now called a Vanda, because the parents have, um, they've changed the genera that they're classified under. Anyway, this has been in this little basket with a few remaining little bits of chunks of bark in here for so long, I can't remember. Most of the roots, as you can see, are outside the basket. There's hardly anything inside. So it basically grows a bit like a sort of bare-rooted Vanda. And like the uh, Vanda denisoniana and the Cattleya, it lives hanging high up on a um, pole near the glass. So it gets plenty of light. And it just gets dumped once a week in a uh, fertilizer solution and then sprayed every day, just to sort of misting to sort of moisten the roots. This has been in flower now for about three or four weeks and will still be in flower for several weeks longer. The first few flowers are just beginning to go brown and drop off, but I'm hoping there's just a few there. So I think it will still be looking really good for our Cambridge Orchid Society annual show, which is next weekend. I did originally read a long time ago that it has a scent, but to my nose, or maybe this plant, not at all. But So that is a slight disappointment, but it is such a fantastic looking plant for so many weeks of the year, every year, it's really worth having. This is Vanda javiori varbarnsii which has been in flower for about six, seven weeks, a really long time. The thing that I really love about this is the beautiful pristine white flowers. 
have a habit of staying in their pristine, beautiful state until they drop off. So there's none of this sort of going brown and then looking a bit messy and then having to grapple with them to take them off to try and tidy the plant up. This is a really superb looking orchid, I think. It's a much cooler growing vanda than most, so for me it suits really quite well. The only slight disappointment, as I mentioned in a previous video, is that it doesn't have any scent. And I was a bit confused at first because I thought Javuri, and I'd read that Vanda Javuri is scented, so I thought that maybe Javuri Barnsii was also scented, but it's not. And in fact, some people put Javuri Barnsii as a separate species, Vanda Barnsii. Since then, I've actually bought a smaller plant of Vanda Javuri, which is supposed to be scented, and that's beginning to grow quite well, lives up um, on the uh, rail where this lives, next to it, and that's also doing really well. But it hasn't flowered for me yet, so I'll report back in a future video when it's flowered, hopefully, and whether it's scented and as beautiful, pristine white as this. The orchid that, <laughs> coming down in scale, this is a miniature orchid, um, Pleurothallis terophora, and um, it might seem strange to some viewers, uh, but this is actually the orchid that I'm most excited about having in flower at the moment. I first came across this about 10 years ago at a um, botanical garden, and since then I spent years trying to find someone who had it, or someone who sold it. It's very rarely available, and I cannot understand it because it's a miniature orchid that has a fantastic scent, a really lovely, sweet, lily of the valley um, perfume to it, absolutely delightful all day. It actually scents quite a sort of, you know, if you're in the vicinity in the, in the greenhouse, you can smell it beautifully. I spent a long time, as I say, trying to find this, and I eventually uh, caught up with a very generous division when I saw it at an orchid show last year and one of the um, society members on the stand put me in touch with the person who'd put it in for the display and he contacted me and said, well, I'm just about to divide my big plant of it. Uh, would you like some? So I said, really, you know, really would very much so, please. Um, and he was very generous and gave me a very large chunk, which I actually divided into three portions and then mounted on this, these chunks of tree fern. This orchid comes from the Atlantic rainforest in South America. And <clears throat> I have actually been there um, a long time ago. It's the only orchid trip I've ever been on to find out how they grow in the wild, which was very useful. They like a sort of damp, um, warm to cool environment, uh, according to the internet. And what I did actually, I actually have a smaller one on another piece of tree fern, and I put that where it's a bit warmer and hung these two up where it's cooler. These two are now beautifully in flower. They quite quickly started growing and producing new leaves. And whilst the other one that was warmer hasn't flowered at all, so this is definitely a case of keeping it cooler and more humid and damp and relatively shady. The fantastic thing about this orchid is that being a pleurothallid, the old leaves will flower of reds up to three, even five years in a row from the same leaf, so you get a really good display. Fantastic plant. But I must point out, and I'm going to look at my notes, I know this as Pleurothallis terophora, and I think a lot of people still call it that. It has since been renamed, and the correct name now is Pabstiella leucopyramis. Pabstiella leucopyramis, or Pabstiella terophora. So, this dear little plant has three possible names that you might find it under. Um, 
as I said, I cannot understand why more people don't grow it because for a miniature orchid that produces a wealth of long lasting, beautiful, sweet smelling flowers, it is really superb. I love it. I'm so pleased to have it in my collection now. So thank you very much to the person who uh, gave me some Now I know that all miniature orchids are very popular and I'll just finish up with this dear little miniature species Phalaenopsis. This is Phalaenopsis perishii. Um, you can see I've got it growing on a piece of uh, cork oak bark. Um, it's been living on here for a long time, probably at least five or six years, which is the advantage of growing it like this because you don't have to keep repotting it. You can see exactly what's going on. I occasionally go in and trim off any of the completely dead old roots and when it's finished flowering use a little tiny pair of scissors to cut out the old flower spikes just to keep it tidy. But it's, there's no smell but the flowers are absolutely exquisite and being a phalaenopsis they last a long time probably um, five, six weeks. This year it has probably more flower spikes than I've ever had. It doesn't unfortunately produce a nice looking little plant. It is mostly basically roots, which is fine. And I think, as I understand from the internet, that's quite common. The leaves are quite small and they don't last very long. But overall, when it's in flower, it produces an exquisite little miniature orchid. Anyway, I better get on with my long list of urgent jobs in the garden. So I'm going to have to say cheerio for now. Thanks ever so much for watching and hope to see you in the next one. So bye for now.